Friday, February 24th, last Friday in February. Next Friday will be uh, the monthly employment report. First Friday every month for the prior month. The Fed meets in mid-March. Uh, the meeting is in play, meaning the Fed might actually raise its interest rate in the middle of March. And the deciding factor may be next Friday's report. But in the meantime, we're trying to evaluate everything else that's going by. And the surprise this week is that long-term rates have come down. Not a lot. Uh, mortgage rates with them. The controlling rate is the U.S. 10-year Treasury note. And U.S. 10s uh, this week, today, reached the lowest level since the first week of December. And if we break through a, a pattern that we've been in, we just locked in the same range from 230 to 250. 2.30 to 2.50. If we break through the bottom of that, we're going to clunk down. We may drop down a quarter of a percentage point. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen either, but it can. The, there's so much going on that it's hard to figure out what the cause of lower is. Um, the, I mean, nobody wants financial people to talk politics, but it's inevitable because politics are so deeply in what we're doing. The big jump in rates after Election Day was predicated mostly on the anticipation of economic stimulus coming from the Trump administration. That, that stimulus at this moment is dead as a hammer. These guys aren't getting anything done. They, all, all they're doing is making somebody new annoyed every day. They haven't made a new friend since the election. We, we, you know, this is just politics. Uh, but none of the proposals that they've had in mind is making any advancement towards a level where you could even take it to Congress to see if Congress would pass it. So if there's no stimulus coming, then maybe the economy is not going to be so hot. Uh, on the good news side, they've stabilized the security team, and it may be the best security team in a long time. Uh, Tillerson at State, Kelly at Homeland Security, and Mattis at Defense. Uh, are first-class pros, and they're not going to be intimidated or rolled by any of the political characters in the White House. That really is good news. Uh, Trump spoke again today uh, to a conservative group. Uh, I've watched the speech on one screen, and on the screen next to it, watched the markets, and while he spoke, the stock market went down and interest rates went down. Uh, not impressive, just another big fight with people like me who are part-time enemies of the people and deal in fake news. Uh, the fake news coming out of the White House is a fountain and, and it is, it's hard for markets to deal with because we don't know from one end to the next what's real and what we're supposed to react to. And these hyper-affirmative pitches about it's going to be the greatest thing you've ever seen, we'll be back to where we never were. And, you know, after a while, like just listening to a real estate developer, none, none of it's real, or is it? It might be. The biggest deal this week, and it, it, if only because time is passing, is the collision between the Fed and the administration. The Fed is in the process of raising rates to keep the economy from overheating, and the administration wants to take the economic growth rate to a level half again to double the maximum growth rate that the Fed thinks is feasible. Um, I've done some digging, and best I can tell, since the election, no one in the administration team, neither transition nor since the inaugural, has met with Yellen. Her phone logs are public information, and I've got a friend who's a very important man who's going to do some digging. And it, it may be that no one has even spoken to her since the election. Her term is up early next year. The vice chairman's term is up early next year. There are seven governors, including the two chairpersons. Three of those seats are empty now. Two more empty out in less than a year. And the, we're flying blind on what that may mean. Typically, a right-side administration uh, the, the right side dream forever has been to remove the Fed from the scene or at least jam it into a box where it won't interfere in anything. 
uh, whether interfering is good or bad, just don't interfere. They, they're all on the tight side of policy, which is also antithetical to what the administration says it wants to do. Meanwhile, if what they want to do is an easier Fed to help stimulate the economy, uh, as I concluded in the written copy next to this video, uh, we, are, we are one tweet, one big tweet from, from the chief uh, demanding easy money by the Fed, and they'll be held to pay in markets. But we're all just flying blind. So, see you next Friday. We'll have the job report in hand, and we'll know a little more.